So I'm absolutely thrilled to be discussing ruxolitinib uh, at the Texas MPN workshop. Um, in particular, JAK inhibitors have revolutionized the care of patients with MPNs, as we all know. Um, there's kind of a before rux and after rux time periods, if you will. Uh, you know, in the large randomized controlled trials that ultimately led to the approval of ruxolitinib, ruxolitinib showed that it could reduce spleens and improve symptoms of patients. And in pooled analyses um, from long-term follow-up data, patients actually did better and lived longer when they received ruxolitinib earlier rather than uh, during the crossover later on after the study was completed. So definitely this has changed things dramatically. And while ruxolitinib and the JAK neighbors have changed things dramatically, improved lives for patients, they still are not perfect. At some point, everyone's disease will progress, whether to more aggressive accelerator blast phase disease or their symptoms in splenomegaly will return. And that is where ruxolitinib falls short. And I think that is the major focus right now in the MPN community is where can we take things beyond ruxolitinib. Ruxolitinib also provides a foundation for a lot of combination therapies. So ruxolitinib can address spleen and symptom burden and mitigate the JAK-STAT signaling. And then we add in additional agents to attack other pathways to improve outcomes that way, whether in the upfront setting or the post-JAK inhibitor setting. So ruxolitinib has been revolutionary. It does fall short. You know, patients will eventually have a worsening of their disease. But looking forward, it is still a key piece of the treatment puzzle and has served as a platform to test new agents.